How to Disable Jenkins CLI. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.452.2. Now, in order to disable the Jenkins CLI, let's first take a look at a knowledge base article from the CloudB site. What we'll see here is this Disable Jenkins CLI Knowledge Base article applies not only to Jenkins, but also to CloudB CI. So if you're using either of those, this will apply to you. So the way we can disable the CLI is by first executing this script. So let's go ahead and copy this script. We'll expand it down and then I get a copy option here. So we'll copy this. But before we actually apply this script to our controller, let's run a job to make sure that our CLI is actually running. So what I have is I have a test job already set up on the controller, and I have a command here from our command line that will run to build the test job. Watch in the lower left-hand corner, and we'll see the test job start. We executed the CLI, and if we take a look at test job, we can see that test job 9 has been scheduled to run. So by the time we finish it up, the job is already complete, so we know that the job ran without any issues. Now let's go ahead and go back over Let's copy this script and we'll apply this script in Manage Jenkins. We'll go down to the bottom and click on Script Console. Let's go ahead and paste this in and click on Run. Okay, now that this completed, let's go back over to our CLI and see if we can run the job again. So we'll go back to our console. Let's run this command one more time. And now what we're getting is an exception that's telling us handshake error. And if we scroll down a little bit, what we're going to see is caused by response code was not 101, it was a 404. So we've successfully disabled the ability to use a CLI against our Jenkins controller. But what happens if the controller gets restarted? We've only applied this script to the running controller. So let's go into our controller and let's go ahead and restart the Jenkins process. Now that the controller is back up, let's go ahead and go run our command one more time. So we're going to say build test job and notice that the job actually was accepted. We did not get that 404 example, and we can see that job number 10 was actually scheduled. Again, we applied the script to a running controller, the controller got restarted, and therefore the configuration for disabling the CLI was all forgotten. So how do we make sure that our disable CLI survives restarts? Let's go back over to the documentation. If we were to scroll down a little bit more, as called out here, this will not survive a restart. So what we need to do is we need to create a post initialization script within the script console. So that's provided to us right here. What's going to happen is it's going to check for the existence of an init groovy D directory within our Jenkins home directory. If it doesn't exist, it's going to go ahead and create that directory. Next up, it's going to create the file CLI shutdown groovy within that directory. The contents of that file are exactly the same contents that we just ran manually above. So that way, when the Jenkins controller restarts, if it finds any files within init groovy D that end in dot groovy, then those files will be executed during the post initialization phase. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go back over into our controller. Now, before we apply this script, let's go ahead and apply the live script first. So we'll go back up here. Let's go ahead and copy our live script. We'll go down into script console, paste that in. So here we're just turning it back off again. So we'll click on run. Now that that completed, let's go ahead and double check our test job. We expect this to fail. That's our 404 again. We take a look at the stack trace here. We see our not 101, but 404. Let's go ahead and go back over to our knowledge base article. Let's go down here and copy the creation of our init groovy D directory. So before we do that, let's go ahead and go take a look at it within the Jenkins home directory. If we go into our Jenkins home directory, let's list it out. What we can see here is there is not an init groovy D directory within our Jenkins home directory. So again, we'll copy this, go to our script console. Let's replace the live script with the creation script and also the directory creation. We'll go ahead and click on run. We can see here at the bottom for the result, it created the directory, it created the script. Let's go ahead and go back into our Jenkins home directory. We list this again. Now we're going to see an init groovy D and if we go ahead and cat out init groovy D CLI shutdown, then we're going to see the script that we just ran internally within our script console. So now let's go ahead and restart our Jenkins controller. So we'll say sudo systemctl restart Jenkins. And now that our controller is back up, let's go ahead and go back over to our CLI and let's try to run our test job one more time. 
And what we can see here is it fails again with the same message, not 101, but 404. So therefore, if you're wanting to disable the CLI for Jenkins, you need to make sure that you set up that post initialization step to survive controller restarts. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.